Hey everybody, this is Stelly FT with Close, and today I'm going to give you five ideas on how to avoid ending up on the cost-cutting chopping block of your customers. So a lot of founders, um, a lot of software companies have been reaching out to me and have been asking me for ideas on what to do to avoid ending up on a list or a spreadsheet of services and software that their customers are going to cut in order to save money. You probably have done this yourself. If you haven't, it'd be amazing, but we definitely have done this at close, you know, pinging every single department in our company and asking the leaders of those departments to list out any non-essential product and service that we're using that they can cut or renegotiate to lower down our cost, right? It's a global pandemic going on, an economic crisis, and every business out there is looking to save money and cut unnecessary cost. So how do you avoid being on that list? What can we do to stop the bleeding of our customers canceling one after the other, especially in SaaS where most of your customers are probably on a subscription basis and can cancel any time? Now, first, let me say that you cannot stop every customer from potentially canceling you in those, during those very difficult times right now. You can't. But just because you cannot stop everyone from canceling doesn't mean that you cannot do anything about it. And what happens way too often is that when times become very, very difficult, when crisis is heightened, what do we do as humans? We retreat. We go away from communicating, from facing the difficult conversations, from being proactive. It's a natural human reaction. Most salespeople right now are way too anxious and are way too afraid to actually keep communicating. They're not calling their prospects and customers anymore. They're not sending out emails. We're all afraid to be annoying. We're all not quite sure what words to put into practice in order to continue business because things are so crazy, but you cannot run away and hide, especially not from your customers. And during difficult times like these, you cannot just purely be reactive. You and your business needs to continue to be proactive, especially during difficult times. So here's the playbook that I'll give you. Very, very simple. Number one, never stop proactively communicating, right? So here's what you do. First, do a little bit of homework. Find out, number one, what is your market doing? What is your industry doing? What are your direct competitors doing right now? What deals do they offer? How do they respond to the COVID-19 crisis? How do they deal with their customers? What is their marketing like? What are their social media accounts like? I'm not a huge fan of focusing on my competition, but during crisis, it makes sense as part of your preparation and research to do a little bit of competitive research and see what is everybody else who's competing for the same customers as I do, who serves the same industry as I do, what are they doing? How are they responding? How are they adapting? You might glean some ideas You might learn some lessons, but at least you're informed. You know who you're competing with, what you're up against right now. Not a month ago, not six months ago, right now. And I suggest that you check in with your competitors at least once a week to stay up to date what's going on in your market. Number two is do a little bit of homework and see what can we do to help ease the pain of our customers. What is within our means to help, to support our customers? Now, some things will be at your disposal, will be viable strategies, and some things won't be viable strategies. Depends all on your profit margin, your cash balance. Your your business is going to look different from your competitors and other companies in the world. And so you can't just copy and paste the strategies of others. It's important to know what they do, but it's also important to do your homework and see what are viable, sustainable ways for us to help, right? There's some very big companies out there that we have reached out to renegotiate, and they just told us flat out, sorry, but we can't do anything for you right now. I mean, here's a blog post on ideas on what to do, but 
We cannot give you any discount. We cannot give you any benefit. Our margins are so thin, we're not doing anything to help you because we can't. It's as simple as that. And then there's other companies out there that do a tremendous amount. They tell you, hey, don't pay us the next couple of months. Or here's a crazy massive discount. You need to check within your metrics, within your unit economics and figure out for our business, if this situation continues for six to 12 months, what can we finance? What kind of help can we sustainably give without bankrupting ourselves? And once you've done your homework and you know what, you, what your market is doing, you know what you can do to help, you need to get proactive. Most of you will be afraid of this. Most of you will want to just wait. And anytime a customer is sending an email to your support team, or your success team, you look at this at a case-by-case -case basis and you figure out what to do about it. But just because a customer is not reaching out to you right now doesn't mean they're not currently putting you on a list of things to cancel. It doesn't mean that they're not considering that you might not be an essential service. It doesn't mean that they're not nervous or afraid or panicked or anxious. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't be valuable for you to communicate to them. So I would suggest you make two lists. One of strategically important clients and customers, people that need one-on-one -on -one attention from you as a founder or a founding team, from the leadership within your company, and reach out to these, maybe it's your biggest customers, maybe it's your strategically most important customers, but make a list of customers that are so important that you need to reach out one-on-one -on -one to them and schedule a time to talk to them, even if they haven't asked for it, and try to understand what is going on in their world, how they're dealing with the immense pressures internally, how can you help them, and how do they think of your software and your service within the landscape of things that are either essential or non-essential, things that need to be reduced in cost or expanded if there's opportunity for growth for them right now. Reach out to them one-on-one, -on -one, talk to them. There's never been a more important time to have customer intimacy, to be talking to your customers, to be listening to your customers, to be understanding what your customers are going through. And number two, you make a list of everybody else that needs a one-to-many communication. Maybe it's just an email that you send out that gives those customers a number of options that links to certain articles or blog posts, that links to a webinar. Maybe you'll do a customer webinar that's one-to-many to answer questions and answers. Or many, many other ways that you can do in a more scalable way if you have thousands and thousands of customers and you cannot talk to every single one of them one-on-one. -on -one. But make lists, create segments of different types of customers and come up with a game plan to reach out to these customers proactively. Don't wait around for them to reach out to you. It's too late by that point. Reach out to them before they reach out to you. Offering them help, offering to listen, to care, and offering maybe some options of what is available to them as they are considering reducing their cost in relationship with the services software you provide. And here's some five simple ideas and things that we are seeing applied in the SaaS marketplace and in other marketplaces out there. Number one, what can you do to offer your customers to reduce their costs without leaving you outright? Well, number one, maybe now's the time for them to downgrade their plan, right? Most SaaS products have multiple tiered plans. Maybe now you can reach out and offer them to downgrade their plans to a low tier plan to save a bunch of money for non-essential features and functionality. Maybe you're gonna offer them the same features and functionality on a lower plan on a case-by-case -case basis, or maybe you do that flat rate for everybody. But you can offer customers to save costs by downgrading instead of just canceling. That's one. The next thing, some services do this, others don't, but some SaaS products, they charge you also by the amount of data that you have, maybe the amount of contacts you have in the system, maybe uh, the amount of leads you have in their system or email addresses you have in their system. If you do that, maybe now is a time to offer your customers to export a bunch of data that they're not using, maybe bad emails, maybe old lead lists, a bunch of data that they're not really actively utilizing or using right now, but that you are charging them for, 
right? Clean up their data to reduce their cost. Maybe you give them a framework or a tool or you offer that service to them proactively. You say, hey, we can clean up your data and save you some cost that way. Number three, maybe you offer them to remove inactive seats. A lot of companies might be using your service and there's a bunch of people that have a seat or have access to your software that are not really actively using it. You see that data, you can tell, hey, here's 10 users or five users that haven't logged in in a couple of months. Maybe we can take them out, right? Save you X amount of dollars every month. Number four, you know, we've seen this uh, in a number of cases now where companies will reach out and offer to skip payment. My gym does this, lots of gyms do this, where they say, hey, we have to keep charging you for your gym membership, but we're just gonna extend your membership by a month. So every month that you're paying for membership that you're not able to actually visit the gym because it has to be closed, we're gonna extend down the line your membership kind of as free membership later on. We've seen this in SaaS already where um, we've received an email from, from a, a software that we're using that said, hey, if you're really in pain, you could click this button and you can skip payment you can postpone payment by 15 days. Some companies do this by 30 days. So you allow your customers to stay as customers, but you push out their payment for one month. And then last but not least, if you cannot stop them from wanting to cancel, offer them the option to pause instead. There's a reason why they were using your software. There's a reason why they were getting value from it. Now they're in a state of panic, they're in a state of collapse, they need to cut costs, and they don't know, they have heightened uncertainty, they don't know how long all of this is going to take, when instead of forcing them to cancel and delete all their data and just be gone, maybe you offer them the option to click a pause button that says everything stays as is, and whenever all of this is over, if they wanna come back and use your service, they can resume the service, start paying again, and start using the service again. That way, at least they don't have to cancel, they can just pause. Those are just five ideas. There are many, many, many more. But no matter what you do, don't just bury your head in sand. Don't just look at the emails that customers send you asking for relief, asking for aid, asking to cut cost and feel worse and worse and worse and think if we're just quiet, if we just stop communicating with the outside world, maybe people will forget that we exist and they won't come and try to cancel service. It's just not true. And also, a final word, if customers are reaching out to you and wanting to cancel or wanting to reduce their cost, please respond to them quickly. Don't let these emails go unanswered for days on end. I know that you feel bad. Sometimes I know that you don't know what to say. You have to come up with a game plan. You have to respond. Even if the response is, we got your email, we know you're hurting, let us quickly discuss this internally. I'll get back to you in a couple of days and figure out a solution that works for both of us. But don't be silent during a crisis. And if you can and you should, be proactive. Reach out to your customers. Offer them solutions. Offer them options. Be there for them. Help them cut cost without them feeling the need to having to cut you off their services and software list entirely. And... As always, if you have questions, comments, feedback, if you want to brainstorm a better game plan for your company to make it through these difficult times, I'm always happy to help in any way I can. Send me an email at stelliaclose.com. We're always there for you. Until next time, stay safe and let's go get them.